I'm Mikiko and uh, I'm a German Japanese manga artist. I've been published in Germany with a few of my manga titles. I've also done some work for Nintendo, so like game cover art and uh, other things. And uh, yeah, I've, I've done all sorts of things, comics, illustration, game art, and uh, yeah, you know, if you can think about it, then I'll probably have tried it. I'm a big um, D D enthusiast, so I also draw a lot of D D art. <laughs> My art style, I would describe it currently as a sort of strongly anime style with western influences perhaps. It's very hard to pinpoint. I find um, I'm very much into anime. I mean I've always been and it's part of my culture so um, it's, it's part of my identity. Um, I think even my early art when I first started out it was very much anime. Um, I think I've much more found my own voice over the years, but it's it's still it's still very much influenced by um, the Japanese style. <laughs> um, I think I've gone through a number of phases where I tried to be more concept arty or tried to uh, in, you know paint more freely. And um, it, not everything worked out for me. I did learn a few things and picked up a few techniques over the years, but uh, at the end of the day, I think it's all still pretty much anime. <laughs> hmm. My family was um, very supportive. Um, it's not always been that case. So it started out when I was about 12. So it was kind of not taken that seriously at first when I said, oh, I want to draw manga. Um, you know, if, if you're 12 and everybody goes, okay, here you go, have some pens, go ahead and draw, whatever. Um, but when I got older, people got more and more worried. Um, my family got quite worried and they tried to get me to go to university and other things. And I just, I was very resistant. I really just wanted to be a manga artist. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, however, um, they're all very supportive. My dad's my biggest fan. He 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 has every single book I've ever drawn in his shelf, and uh, he always asks when something new comes out if he can get a copy, and he asks if he can get it signed too, which is very sweet. Um, I'm mainly self-taught because um, when I finished school there were no options of pursuing this kind of career. Um, I finished school in Germany and Germany was uh, an environment that was very hostile towards anybody who wanted to be a comic artist. It was, it was not really easy. Um, the idea that you could be a freelancer was incredibly foreign to all my teachers so it was a case of having to figure things out for myself from day one and um, yeah how do you find discipline is a difficult one if you're stubborn enough then um, if you're stubborn enough and you're driven enough then you'll find a way because it is what you're passionate about so if you're passionate about it you'll you'll just search the internet for whatever you can do and um, it started out very small with just posting online and finding out that actually people do want to see my stuff and then um, figuring out how can I you know make something more of it uh, yeah it's it's hard discipline is something you have to practice and um, it doesn't come very easily and a lot of people um, struggle you know even if they've been doing this for years it's not yeah it's not very easy I think the main thing that got me where I am now is a, a sense of stubbornness. I felt like I could prove everyone that doubted me wrong. <laughs> and um, and whenever I tried something and it worked out, it was like a eureka moment. And um, and I, I was validated that, you know, I was right all this time. I just had to get the right combination and I just had to do it long enough and I had to fight long enough. Um, but in the end, you do have to be lucky as well. So I got lucky at the end of the day. Um, it's not just hard work.
The most important part for me in my journey as an artist in this struggle of nobody helping me out was the internet and um, and one of the first websites that I got onto was DeviantArt and there were so many resources for free that you could just look up, you could get references, stock images, uh, tutorials, I mean I look back and some of them were not that great but it doesn't matter, there was a community that um, pushed each other and that was driving each other to improve and, and even if it were was hobbyists mixed with professionals you know you, you still sort of push each other to go forward and I think um, just the idea knowing that in the internet on the internet somewhere out there you had all the answers um, that was really key to me like going further and um, also finding new information and growing as an artist so um, yeah so resources online it's a big one <laughs> Um, another trait that I find was incredibly helpful was the ability to um, speak up and talk to other artists, ask questions, approach them, just leave comments, um, even DM them and a lot of people are incredibly happy to help. It was surprising to me because I was, you know, I was a teenager, I was very shy and I just didn't really know but whenever I messaged someone famous I think everyone responded without fail they did respond they took their time and told me whatever you know whatever needed to know and um, and funnily enough in real life when you go and you want to talk to publishers or any sort of job situation you need to be able to communicate so I find that communication and being able to um, have a conversation with people it has been one of my yeah, one of the most important traits, um, I think, for, for artists who want to get somewhere, yeah. Um, I did take part in a lot of contests. Well, not quite. So I didn't take part in contests that, um, that just had cash prizes or, you know, had some sort of reward at the end where you win something like some, I don't know, console or something. I never really participated in those because I felt that um, I could never win those. And I never have, in fact. <laughs> I actually never have. Um, however, um, DeviantArt had this very, very particular kind of uh, contest that came up, I don't remember when, <laughs> um, yeah, a while back, which was called OCT, which was an original character tournament. And what it was, was that you took your own OC and everyone else had their own OC that they applied with. You, you drew a comic or some sort of entry in which your character arrives at this tournament, kind of like Dragon Ball, you know, where, where people battle each other. And the whole idea was you would battle other people with your original character. And the great thing was, that participating was rewarding in and of itself because you could get art from other people drawing your characters cameos you know or just you know fighting them or coming up with really fun stories where they don't fight and instead just become friends or something like that and it was it was incredibly inspiring because as I mentioned before this skill of communicating came very naturally because you had to talk to people, you asked them questions about their OCs, um, you had to communicate and find out like what, where's your character sheets, what's your character like um, and, and also be spontaneous and create something new and fun uh, with other people because it was a collaborative sort of thing, people really rooted for one another even if you left the contest after the first round or so, people generally stuck around to just chat and talk and talk about what they wished would happen or what the outcome would be like and just came up with lots of stories and I think um, it's like a breeding ground for creativity and it was uh, it was really addictive which is why I took part so many times. I never won any of them but I made a lot of friends. <laughs> How I I never um, I never decided um, to reach out to a publisher. It was in fact the other way around. I was very active in um, shows and conventions, and I would just 
um, go to like the biggest shows in Germany constantly and um, I was kind of a fixture in those um, and I just crossed paths with Tokyo Pop fairly regularly so I knew the CEO by name and and it just ended up with them approaching me um, I don't think I would have ever been ready <laughs> Um, I wasn't a very confident person, I was just making my own comics whenever I wanted and I was just getting a lot of attention online and my fans were talking about me and then I got an opportunity to have a, a talk on stage and it just so happened that the publishing, the publishing house had a, a, a booth right across the stage and they just were watching me do my little talk all alone with like three people in the front row and uh, and they just liked it so they just ended up looking up my book I had a book ready and the CEO just read it and said hey do you wanna do you wanna join us essentially what I like the most about being a comic artist I think is um, the human connection it sounds really cheesy, but when I draw a story, um, I draw it for myself. I don't really think about what do people want to see, I think about what do I want to draw, and I just go for it. And then at the end of the day, however, um, I get feedback, right? I get people who go, I read your story, this part really made me cry, or oh my god, this, this thing was like on oh, my heart skip to be or something and it's moments like these where you realize that we're all human feeling the same things looking at the same sort of thing and i created that thing and i got an emotional response out of it and i think it's kind of magical and i think that's my favorite part about making comics is the ability to be on the same level with people for a moment and um, yeah, it's kind of like magic. <laughs> mm. What surprised me is that I always thought that I was the only person who really had no idea how to get where I wanted to go. Um, so since in Germany there was there's no course for game art or illustration or anything of the sort at the time, they only had graphic design and and like fine arts which is not how you don't learn how to draw in those uh, courses <laughs> and um, so my options for being a comic artist were practically non-existent and um, and I know that some countries have programs to help you like France is great with comic books and and you, you can probably learn from the best their animation and all these things America obviously with like the film industry you can you can become a concept artist but like if you want to be anything that doesn't fit a mold um, nobody knows how to get there, so whatever you try is probably the best bet you've got because nobody knows. But this is exactly why it's so important to talk to others because I've also found that so many people don't know what they're doing and the only way they learn is by talking to each other and sharing like their tips and tricks and, and um, cr like critiquing each other's work, helping each other grow. Like this is how everybody does it. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really important. Uh, so I have been on DeviantArt. I have to check how long. All right, 17 years. <laughs> A lot has happened in that time. Uh, I started out as like over con an overconfident little teenaged girl who was like really um, convinced she was the best artist around and then I found so many good artists and immediately had to reevaluate <laughs> my life a little bit but took it as an opportunity to learn and grow and um, I got my first like commissions on DeviantArt, I got my first proper job offers as well, like bigger things. Um, and I think 
it was the place that got a lot of attention. Um, like my first viral mini comics were posted on DeviantArt and uh, my publisher found my DeviantArt page and was impressed with the amount of traffic I got there and um, and you know they could flip through the gallery and all that. It was it was great. I mean I know that a lot of people at a certain time said oh it's not that professional because there's a lot of teenagers on there but you know it still was a huge like it's still a huge art website that everybody knows and it 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 just you can't take that away i've met like the most important people um colleagues and personal friends through deviantart so yeah it, it means a lot to me and uh, i think uh, i had many many great times there as well so yeah yes so that was uh, my very first OCT audition and um, yeah my style is a little bit different back then and I think you can really see that I rushed it <laughs> I used to be very sloppy um, I take a lot more time to draw things very cleanly these days um, I feel I would describe my style as unrefined but very dynamic like expressive and I think I still have that expressiveness in my work but I would like to think I've refined my style a little bit <laughs> um, yeah but I, I, think, I still think that um, my emphasis is still always on facial expressions and emotion and I think that has never changed. My perspective on storytelling is mainly just as long as it has a good rhythm it has to have a rhythm and as long as it's good it doesn't really matter what you're telling a story about um, it can be fun and engaging and um, uh, I don't think you should follow any formulas, you should really just tell the story how you like it. And uh, I think people having unique stories is what makes comics so interesting. This is a difficult one um, because I feel like art is very much connected to our mental and emotional well-being. I've, I've seen many, many artists who, who ended up in jobs that were like soul-crushing jobs where at the end of the day they had no energy left to draw and they were agonising over it because um, drawing was their passion and they just simply couldn't do that anymore. And um, I've noticed that a lot of people have commented that the, the biggest step for them is to start a drawing and to make like take the first step of starting to draw and I am wondering if that has a lot to do with how people are feeling. Um, anxiety and depression are a big thing and they can absolutely get in the way of, of drawing. Um, so, so I myself, I suffer from bipolar disorder and I have to take medication every single day and before I did that I could not draw anymore. I, I was able to mechanically draw if I needed to for money but I didn't have any enjoyment in it and whenever I could avoid it I'd avoid it because I was not enjoying the process of, of creating art anymore and I feel like maybe some some people have a very similar situation where something is not right in their life and they need to figure that out first. It's very hard to say because stress and hard work and sometimes you can't do anything about it because you know life happens but maybe the question is not how do I start to draw but more like how can I be balanced again and um, it's, I'm not in a position to give advice on that, but I would urge people to think about that at least, because in my case, that was the problem. Um, I think being insecure about your own art 
is inevitable. Um, I get insecure about my own art. All the famous people that you probably admire are probably similar, that they're just like, I don't even know what I'm doing, you know, or they just have imposter syndrome just like everybody else. We're all humans after all. Um, yeah, it's it's like one of those things you have to push back in your mind and keep going. This is why I draw for myself. I don't draw for an audience, not because I'm selfish. It's because I'm my own anchor in these things. And if I draw for myself, I know what I want. And this is what I want. And this is something no one can take from me. And so comments online don't matter because my, my goal was to draw something that made me happy, first of all. And then the pressure from outside is not that relevant. For the DeviantArt focus piece, I decided to pick a few things that I really enjoy. Um, so I'm a big fan of of, <laughs> of Japanese kimonos, as you can as you can see in the back. Um, I I own quite a lot of these uh, myself. So this is a, a long sleeve furisobe, which is the one that the girl is wearing in the picture, um, and uh, it's just a big part of my identity uh, as a half Japanese person. And I just like wearing them a lot and I find it have a, a certain elegance that is just really, really nice to draw as well. Um, so the girl herself is a, an oni, which is like based off the Hanya mask, which you've seen in the mirror, um, which is a, a classical normal mask, which is a type of theatre in Japan. Um, it's a lot of information, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's all, um, you know, uh, it's all from my, my culture back home. Um, elements from there mixed with modern elements such as so tattoos. I'm a big fan of tattoos. Um, I'm hoping to get more myself. I've only got one <laughs> but I do want to get more tattoos uh, over time so I figured that's a nice um, modern element. I was going to give her non-traditional style um, tattoos um, and then the the element of nature, the moon, the flowers is kind of something that is serene and uh, maybe a contrast to what she represents which is like a distorted version of a woman that society might perceive in a certain way. Um, so I'm not trying to be deep with this drawing, I just picked things that visually look very fun and then how people interpret it is up to them. I just wanted like a demon girl with a beautiful kimono and cool tattoos that looks beautiful and um, and I love demons and devils and flowers and nature so um, yeah so it's it's really up to people to, to see what they see in it um, I'd, I'd be very happy to hear uh, and read the comment section later on when it's done <laughs> My goal with this piece was also to have a bunch of things I can share because um, a, a large part of the focus month is that I share some resources and I thought I'd pick something that isn't that readily available. So information about the kimono is, is not that easy to come across, especially for non-Japanese people. They can't identify necessarily what's authentic. Um, so I thought maybe I can provide some images or references that can help um, which was a part of my choice <laughs> um, whilst also keeping my identity within the piece like this is me you know um, trying to uh, communicate that a little bit like this is a bit of me <laughs> I think the main thing I hope to convey is that um, the process can be very very long um, and sometimes it doesn't go with a hitch. I mean so far when this video is made it's been fine but it, it does happen where it isn't fine um, and that like having to go back and change things and fix things and spend hours and hours and hours is a thing that happens and it's perfectly fine. Um, there is no speed at which you have to be as an artist to be a good artist. There is no um, secret ingredient to make it all perfect. There's no, you know, to-do list of, of how to be perfect. There, it just doesn't exist. 
and so just seeing as many different processes as possible is probably a very very um, important thing especially for young artists if enough artists do the focus month then they'll see that everyone works differently too and that it's okay to be different um, yeah I think I think that's it I want people to know that even if you think um, a really famous artist or someone you admire is perfect they rarely think that of themselves and um, they just keep striving and keep getting better that's all um, but generally people would consider themselves to be nowhere near perfect <laughs> i don't and um yeah i don't know it's it's hard to say i just hope somebody learns something from it and um is inspired to a degree or learn something new you know yeah i hope so i hope that very much <laughs> Well, there you go. That's my little interview. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write them in DMs or post them in comments. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.